Hi, folks. I'm going to talk a little about the International Laser Ranging Service. Uh, this was uh, prepared by uh, Claudia and, and myself with uh, help from many others. Uh, this is what the, uh, the ILRS network looks like. Uh, we show here uh, current stations, stations that are in process, um, and uh, lots of new stations coming along. Some are transitions. For instance, uh, some of the NASA sites are being converted from uh, legacy sites to more of the high technology sites. Uh, what you'll also notice, of course, is there are still very large gaps, uh, gaps in, uh, in the areas in Latin America, uh, in, uh, in, in Africa, uh, and also in Oceania. Other places where we have lots of stations, and uh, we try and convince folks to, uh, rather than building a new laser station in their backyard, to perhaps go to some place where uh, we have a big void. Uh, we haven't been as successful in that as we had hoped, but uh, we're still still hopeful. Uh, and of course, the stations are, uh, say there are gaps, geographic gaps here. Uh, we've got also different vintage systems. We have uh, different weather conditions, different staffing levels. So. Uh, so there are a lot of a lot of differences. Uh, so this this is not a standard design system as are as are the others. Uh, this uh, shows you the performance of the stations. Uh, we set a uh, uh, a nominal bound of uh, 3,500 passes, in which we uh, asked stations to uh, to aim for. Uh, about 40% of the stations have uh, achieved that. Uh, some have done much, 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 much better. Uh, but unfortunately, as you can see to the right here, uh, we have some stations that are uh, what I call on the verge of non-performance. And uh, we, uh, we keep uh, pressing on those folks. Uh, some of them are in uh, states of transition. Uh, the laser stations have been changed, changing the uh, the laser itself, some of the other equipment, uh, and uh, some have just just taken a long time. And you note here we point out uh, the Leos and the Legios, Laras vintage, uh, vintage, and then uh, also the, uh, the the high the high satellites. And uh, we're very pleased. The number of the stations are doing very well. With the high satellites, and uh, and as such, uh, we are. Uh, keep being uh, asked for more. This gives you some idea of uh, the, uh, the different satellite types that we, we, we track. Uh, the top row are the geodetic satellites. These are the spheres with the retro reflectors uh, covering the, the top. Uh, uh, and um, you know, some, some of these go back 30, 40 years. Uh, others are, others are, are fairly new. So, uh, in fact, uh, simple as it may seem, uh, technology has changed even in these satellites as the retro reflectors uh, have uh, new designs and new ways of being put put together. Uh, some of them have, uh, for instance, in the uh, LARAS-2 LARAS satellite, ways of uh, putting more or more uh, retro reflectors on the surface. As sort of condensing them on the surface. Uh, and this has the advantage of uh, avoiding some of the discontinuities that you can see when the ranging system is working on a satellite that is, uh, is turning. Okay. We also have LEOs. Uh, here we have uh, gravity field satellites. We have uh, uh, altimeter satellites. Uh, and we have uh, you know, a number of other sensors that are uh, uh, sensing properties of the ocean, properties of the land. Uh, and um, uh, and uh, some are actually technology tests of uh, new ranging systems, new retro reflectors, et cetera, et cetera. And then we've got the high satellites, which are the GLONASS, uh, Galileo, Beidou, uh, the QZS satellites, the IRNSS, the Indian satellites. And uh, our expectation is that there'll be a, you know, a whole constellation of new GPS satellites coming uh, during the next the next decade.
One of the things that's happened is uh, folks are going to uh, laser ranging systems with narrower pulses going down to uh, as much as a few picoseconds uh, and, um, and other, other features, uh, which of course improves precision. But what it also does is it shows that um, you can get some very complicated patterns, patterns from uh, these satellites. Uh, so you'll see uh, up above, uh, these are the, uh, the, the one on the left is a, a, a standard array that's used on uh, the, uh, the LEO satellites. And then you head to the uh, middle and to the right, you see the geodetic satellites. And even though they're spheres or whatever, you can still see all kinds of structure. And this structure gets more, more structure uh, as the uh, laser ranging systems use uh, narrower, narrower pulses and fast and high repetition rates. Uh, you can see on the bottom uh, some uh, patterns that you can see from arrays that have distributed uh, satellites that have distributed arrays. So you can actually see something about the orientation of the satellite by looking at the, the patterns that you get from the different uh, retroreflector arrays that are on the, on the satellite. Okay. Once again, it makes very interesting pattern to study the motion of the satellite. Uh, and it also makes it, of course, a little more complicated to uh, interpret the results. Uh, increasing action in uh, the lunar laser ranging. Uh, you heard about the uh, uh, Chinese retro, uh, the, Ch the Chinese lander. Also heard about the uh, the failure of the Russian. Uh, but uh, this this means that uh, you know more activity is going in, more resources, more more effort going into this, and so we, we think this field is growing. Uh, NASA has uh, taken over the Apollo site in uh, in New Mexico. Uh, we also have uh, activity, uh, ranging activity from uh, Matera. And note this one is a 1064 in, instead of in the green, uh, which uh, very nice, very nice results from Grass uh, in France, from Wetzel, uh, and, uh, and there are new, new stations being built in, in China. So uh, an area that has been, I say, gone through a period of a lull for a number of years, uh, we think this is coming alive. We think more groups are interested in it. Uh, and more of the systems that are being built, we think will be uh, multi-application, we're hopeful. Okay. Also, we point out that uh, the LLR model improvements uh, that are being done now uh, will improve uh, lunar and planetary science, uh, earth science, fundamental physics, uh, celestial mechanics, uh, uh, lunar ephemerides, uh, and, and probably enable a better understanding the dynamics of the Earth-Moon system. So we're very pleased with the, the activities that have, that have gone on there. Uh, a most recent workshop in lunar ranging has uh, been, uh, been uh, handled in, in uh, France uh, at September 14th and 15th, which is just last week. And I don't know, there may be some people who just went from one of those, that meeting to one of these meetings. And uh, uh, so it's... Uh, once again, very exciting, and uh, we think that whole area is being rejuvenated. Uh, we also point out that uh, an application, uh, it's been an application for a while, but that's uh, uh, gaining probably some new life here, is an optical time transfer being done with the laser. A very powerful tool for uh, connect connecting, uh, you know, clocks in, in uh, uh, different uh, different satellites, and uh, so there's uh, a lot of uh, studies that are being done of experiments that can be done. So uh, we're expecting that uh, that uh, uh, more groups will be trying this as satellites are launched that can accommodate it. A lot of activity in the analysis area. I'm sure you've known over the, the past um, couple of years, and in particular for the latest the ITRF, uh, the uh, modeling efforts that have gone on in the uh, SLR field have provided uh, fairly, a very dramatic improvement. Um, we had uh, lots of uh, systematic errors uh, 
uh, in the in the data um, and, uh, and some of the uh, the uh, testing, some of the working with the stations, some of the modeling uh, have allowed us uh, to uh, improve those considerably. And uh, so we had quite a dramatic improvement in the in the scale uh, measurements uh, by the SLR. Um, and which brought them uh, much, much closer to the, the uh, values that we're getting by the IVS. So um, we're very pleased with that. Um, the guy who has headed a lot of that, uh, Erikos Pavlis, uh, is uh, fortunately or unfortunately retiring at the end of this year. Uh, so we're trying to, to influence him that even though he'll be living back in Greece with his family, that he'll still be available on on the telephone and on the uh, on the, uh, on, the uh, on the internet. A the the most important event I think uh, for the ILRS uh, the international workshops that we hold uh, supposedly every two years. Uh, sometimes we've skipped it. Uh, COVID certainly uh, played a role in this. And um, so in uh, late uh, 2022, uh, we held the uh, uh, workshop um, here. And uh, some of you were able to, to attend. Um, uh, so the 22nd International Workshop on Laser Ranging was held uh, here in, in Spain in November. Uh, we had planned to have a specialty workshop uh, this year uh, in, in Arequipa, uh, but unfortunately, uh, some of the political conditions there were such that uh, that's been postponed. And uh, what is being set up now is uh, as a virtual workshop uh, that will be held on the week of uh, October 16th through the 20th. Uh, and what we're doing it is uh, rather than running them whole days, uh, we're trying out the idea of running them a couple of hours a day for the week. And uh, the last thing I heard, they were trying to adjust, maybe running them different times on different days, so not everybody, so that there wouldn't be someone who was equally inconvenienced for the whole week. Uh, I don't, I don't know how that's going to going to work out. Um, but we're, we're, uh, most of these workshops are bringing in uh, 150 to. 200 plus uh, people from, uh, from around the world, uh, 20, 30 countries. And uh, they've really been very popular events. Uh, and also it gives opportunities for the groups to meet, uh, to uh, look at the you know, specialty issues in the, in the technology and in the analysis. So thank you very much. And we'll take questions at the end.